Hi, Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. Here with some word followed by Pat's Two Cents. Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 18 through 21. When I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at thine hand. Pat's two cents. Now, there are times when we see somebody going down the wrong road. We already know how that whole scenario plays out. Do you know you need to be willing to risk a friendship or a relationship by telling them the truth? You don't have to beat them over the head with the truth, but tell the truth in love and patience. If they refuse it, it's on them, baby. But if you never open your mouth, God could hold you accountable for it. Listen, verse 19. Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turns not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. In other words, you won't be held accountable at that point. Listen, again, this is the word again. Verse 20. When a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity. In other words, if he backslides. Or he's saved and he starts dabbling in sin again. Mm, listen. Again, when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and commits iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die. Because thou hast not given him warning, he shall die in his sin. And his righteousness, which he has done, shall not be remembered. But his blood, will I require at thine hand. Imagine how many people are going to hell that God's going to hold some of us responsible for. Now, witnessing does not mean you have to tell them all the four laws of the gospel and every, you know, they have to know the Bible backwards and forwards at one night. No. Being a witness is, this is Pat's two cents, being a witness is telling somebody what you have experienced or seen firsthand. That's all you have to do. He's not telling you to tell them, get them saved and push them up in heaven. All he wants you to do is live a holy life and be an example. When my brother was in the hospital, the first thing I talked about was, eh, this might be a good time for you to pray. And then I prayed for him. But I live a holy life before him. And I know there's going to be more for me to do. But I'm not going to beat him over the head. Because sometimes as saints we get so eager beaver and so zealous that we start shoving the food down their throat. And we don't realize we're causing people to gag off the gospel rather than partake. Yeah, it's the way you feed. There's a technique. You don't want to force feed. Not good. Okay. So you have to use wisdom mixed with your obedience. Listen, I'm going to read that again. When a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity or sin, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die, because thou hast not given him his warning. He shall die in his sin. And his righteousness, which he hath done, shall not be remembered. But his blood will I require at thine hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man that the righteous sin not, and he doth not sin, he shall surely live. 
because he is warned. Also, thou hast delivered thy soul. So, we owe it to each other to speak up. You see somebody who is a, this is Pat's two cents. You see somebody who is a born again Christian and they're in an adulterous relationship. Oh, it's time to open thy mouth wide. Now, you don't have to beat them up with it. You don't have to condemn them. But you do have to tell them. A spade is a spade, baby. And adultery is adultery. And adultery is sin. Do you hear what I'm saying? Um, if you see somebody getting into an abusive relationship, you need to warn them. No, it's on them to make up their mind. But at least you have opened your mouth. If you see something, you have a dream about somebody, it's a real bad dream, and you're afraid something really bad's going to happen, it's kind of a good thing to share that with them. Don't keep it to yourself. Um, we have to be willing to risk relationships for the sake of saving a soul, saving a life. Saving a person out of a horrible relationship or out of a horrible situation. Anyway, I'm done. And I'm moving right along. And I hope you enjoyed that tidbit of a lesson. God bless you. Over and out.